Now to a story we first told you about yesterday. A six-week abortion ban passed by South Carolina State Senate. Now heading to the governor's desk where it is expected to be signed into law today around 10 a.m. Eastern time. The law prohibits all abortions after a fetal heartbeat is found with some exceptions for rape, incest, and health of the mother. Also the, the fetus as well. Here to talk about it, South Carolina State Senator Lawrence Grooms, Elise Ketch with the Progressive Anti-Abortion Uprising. Uh, State Senator and Ms. Ketch, thank you both for coming on. We do appreciate that. Uh, Senator, talk to us about this and how the state was able to get this done. I know South Carolina has tried to get the, the so-called heartbeat bill done for, for some time now. This time around, it was able to get past the House, the Senate, and to be signed by your governor, uh, I believe, in about 20 minutes from now. What, what happened this time? Well, we're just a few minutes away from it becoming law again. Uh, we passed a fetal heartbeat ban, and it was struck down by our Supreme Court. Uh, they cited some reasons, and we have corrected those reasons, and we're sending the bill back to the governor for his signature. It will soon become law. Uh, we do expect Planned Parenthood to file a challenge, so it will be back before our Supreme Court uh, very shortly. But it's important uh, that we recognize the humanity of the unborn. Um, the, the question of, of, of choice, well, I stand on the side of life. Uh, the, the unborn, they're humans. They're part of the human family. Uh, and we have a, a, a terrible history uh, when humanity does not recognize the humanity of others. And when you recognize the humanity the unborn, they are deserving of life. Uh, Jefferson, in our declaration statement, spells out life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But he also says that the purpose of government is to secure these rights. Governments are instituted among men. The primary purpose of government is to protect life. You know, South Carolina isn't the only state taking this step. More than a dozen have nearly uh, ceased all abortion services since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. And Elise, I'll go to you. What does this tell you about uh, the future of abortion access within the United States in your view? I think um, it's great hope that abortion access is going to be limited reasonably and finally get to a place where it's in uh, step with its contemporaries in Europe. Like most of Europe has a 12 week elective abortion ban and most of the United States does not. But we're slowly inching there. And now with South Carolina taking this step, um, none of the deep south has um, any lack of robust abortion bans. So there's no more abortion destination states in the Deep South, and that's a huge win. But we're going to see other uh, states in, in the United States become um, destination states, and you're going to see a lot of abortion tourism, especially in places that allow abortion up to almost birth now, like California, New Mexico, Washington, D.C., and New York. All right. And, and finally, closing with uh, the state senator there in South Carolina, again, a, a major moment about 17 minutes from now where the governor of South Carolina will sign that into law. You did announce that you do plan on uh, receiving challenges to this, which would be taken up by the courts again. Um, but talk to me about what you hear from constituents there in South Carolina, both for and against what is being done in South Carolina. Is this a major moment? Is this a celebratory moment uh, for, for the pro-life movement? Well, it is a celebratory moment for the pro-life community. We're, we're celebrating life. That's what we are. Uh, we are either a culture of life or a culture of death. Uh, there's a lot of problems in this world. There certainly are. And government can't solve them all. But you should look to solutions that promote life. And this is one of these solutions that does promote life because it ensures that there are legal protections now for the unborn here in South Carolina. As we've seen, the overturning of Roe sends it back to the states, and that means the voters really can voice their opinions by whom they elect to serve in the state legislatures, and then, of course, the action they take next. State Senator Lawrence Grooms and Elise Ketch, we appreciate you both coming on today. Thanks so much. Thank you.